Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how to use a slide rule for basic multiplication and division, as well as how a slide rule works in this regard. Now while I do have a proper slide rule here, specifically an Academy 300 series, if you don't have an actual slide rule, you can print off uh, paper ones on the internet and make these, and they work great. And I highly recommend doing it because it's a lot of fun and it means you can follow along with this. So I'll link this one uh, in the description. So, you'll notice that a slide rule has three strips. Two that are stationary and then one that can move. There's also a hairline and this can move along the slide rule. And it's not particularly important, especially for what we're going to be doing today. But it does mean you can read off... The, uh, the scale is a bit easier, so you can follow it up. Now, speaking of the scales, this slide rule has a K, A, B, C, I, C, D, and L scales. And different slide rules can have different scales. But this is a K, A, B, C, I, C, D, L slide, slide rule. And you'll see that B, C, I, and C are all on the moving portion, while K and A are above, and C and D and L are below. Today, we're going to focus on the C and D scales. To start, let's do a very simple multiplication. 2 times 2. So you line up the 1 on the C scale, you see there, with the number you want to multiply, 2, on the D scale. Oops. So, line this up. Then, you follow along on the D scale, no, on the C scale, it's the number you want to multiply by. So we've got 2 over there, and we're going to multiply by 2 over here, and we get 4 on the D scale. So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6, and 2 times 4 is 8, times 5 is 10. Let's have a look at 3. 3 times 2 is 6, times 3 is 9, 3 squared is 9. So how does this work? Well, slide rules use logarithms, and if you don't know what logarithms are, they are sort of like the reverse of squaring something or raising something to a power. But they're not like roots, they're not square roots or cube roots, which tell you what was raised to a power, they tell you what the power is. So, if you look, 10, 10 squared is 100, and the log of 100 is 2. So it's the log, base 10 of 100 is 2, but when you're dealing with 10, you generally don't write the base in, in subscript there. But if you wanted that, the, the log of 100 base 2, we could do that. There's also the natural log, and this is base E, and that's just LN. But in this video, we're just going to use log base 10, which is just written as a log. So log of 100 is 2, because 10 squared is 100. Log of 10 is 1, because 10 to the power of 1 is 10. And 10 to the 0th power, anything to the power of 0, is 1. And sure enough, the log of 1 is zero. So if that's zero, one is one is zero, and ten is one, all of the other numbers are somewhere in between. So the log of two is a bit over zero point three. So that two is zero point three or a bit over along this scale. And logs have a very nice property that the log of A plus the log of B equals the log of A times B. So that means we can turn multiplications into additions. When multiplying 2 by 2, we go a distance of 2 along the bottom scale and a distance of 2 along the top. So we're adding the log of 2 plus the log of 2, and that's equal to the log of 2 times 2, the log of 4. Great. Let's look at some more advanced multiplications. You would have noticed, perhaps when we multiplied by 3, that it very quickly goes off the scale. What if we want to do 3 times 4? Surely we should be able to do that. That's very basic, and slide rules a bit useless if you can't. But don't worry, you can. 
what you have to do is slide the 10 over here, the 10 on the C scale, over to the 3 on the D scale. So 3 times 4, following the 4, is 12. Now, something important to note on side rules is that they can't distinguish the decimal places or the number of zeros. So 3 times 4 is 12, but 30 times 40 is 1,200. And 30 is just a 3 on a side rule, and 40 is just a 4. And 1,200 is just 12, or even 1.2, because if you look, it's between the 1 and the 2. So you do need to work out that yourself. Side rules can only estimate. Because um, also, when you're getting into smaller numbers or bigger numbers, there is a level of precision that is, is lost. So if we want to do 1.2 times 2, you'll see that middle one there is 2.5, and we're a little before it. Oh, I knocked it off slightly. 2.4 but equally that could be 12 times 2 is 24 or 120 times 2 is 240 and let's say we wanted to do 121 times 2 you see we slide along slightly we go to go over here and we get 100 and sorry 242 but let's say we wanted to do 121.5. One, you see we're in between the lines now, so we're starting to lose some precision. And you see it's in between the lines here. This one, the scale was... So, because the numbers with a logarithmic scale get squashed closer and closer together, the gaps between the lines get smaller and smaller, so they run out of space to include every single one here. So here it increments by two, we're in between them. So we get 243. Now let's have a quick look at division. Let's say we want to do the incredibly hard division of 8 divided by 2. So we find 8 on the D scale. And 2 on the C scale. And we slide the 2 on the C scale. Along so it's at the 8. Oh, that's a 9. 8 on the D scale. Just focus. And we follow along to the 1, and we see we get 4. And now let's do the 9 divided by 2. 9, 2. In between the 4 and the 5, it's 4.5. So there we have it. The basic usage of slide rules. Now, of course, there are many other scales on here. And there's a lot more you can do with them. The CI scale can make most... Uh, divisions a bit easier for some large numbers that go off the scales. B and A are the square of what's down here, and K is cubed. L is logarithmic, so it actually reverses the, the log process. And they've all got their own uses and complications and the ways they work, but I'm not going to go over them in this video. So that's enough. Goodbye.